yeah, the YouTube channel. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. How are you guys doing? It's day four of Ignite. How are you guys feeling? All right. And energy levels are still there. It's good. Done a lot of walking. My name is Delonda Coleman, and I'm a product marketing manager for Skype for Business and also Microsoft Teams. If you're joining us online today and you're already a previous watcher of our show, you'll notice some big changes that we've made. Originally, our show was called the Skype Meeting Broadcast Series, and we'd air bi-weekly. And because of all the announcements that we've made this week at Ignite, we've decided to rebrand our show to Teams on Air. And so for those of you who are new and this is the first time participating in the show, you can watch us bi-weekly, Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we go over all the roadmaps and features and functionality of intelligent communications uh, across Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams. So thank you again for joining us. 
Today we're going to be talking about something really important. We, uh, As you guys may have heard during this week at Ignite, or if you're following us online in our blogs, we've decided to unveil a new vision of unified communications and that we're calling intelligent communications. So today I've brought two guests with me. I've brought Dan Stevenson. Hi. Thank you for joining oh, us. I'm glad to be here. He is on the engineering team and he works specifically on Microsoft Teams across some of the different capabilities. And then I've also brought Tom Othnerbot. He's a second time guest on the show. Thank you for coming yeah, again. Yeah, no, I appreciate the time. I call Tom the Superman of Unified Communications. And that's, that's why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom is also our MVP, or our most valued professional, and he is uh, our reporter for this uh, Microsoft Ignite. So if you follow him on Twitter, Instagram, or not Instagram, yeah, right? Twitter, Instagram? Twi Twitter and LinkedIn are the big ones. <laughs> Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. I'm not cool enough for Instagram. <laughs> He has tons of, he, he's been uh, going behind the scenes and doing tons of things. So thank you both for joining us. Yeah, thank Glad you. So Dan, tell me a little bit and tell the audience a little bit about what you do at Microsoft and some of the things that you're working on. Sure, yeah. So um, I'm so very proud to work on Microsoft Teams. My team owns a lot of the stuff that people use if they're an IT admin. So provisioning, uh, compliance and security is a big thing for us. Guest access we just came out with. We also do all the team and channel features and mm -hmm. a bunch of onboarding and growth features, including the uh, Teams for Education that we unveiled uh, just a few months ago and has been taking, as the school year started, has been really taking off. Cool. Yeah. And Tom, tell us about your role as a consultant. Um, yeah. Sure. Modality. So, so I work for Modality Systems, who are a global kind of Skype business and UC specialist. So loads and loads of Skype business, and obviously more recently a lot of Teams. So I've been fortunate to be on the Teams tap, and obviously I'm on the MVP program. So seeing seeing a lot of what's going on, and now this week really starting to understand the vision of where things are going. Yeah, thank you. All right, um, just in case you missed it, I know that it's a busy <laughs> week. I wanted to recap some of the things that we unveiled today, or excuse me, this week at Ignite. Uh, the first big announcement was that we have a new infrastructure, a backend infrastructure for Skype for Business. And that infrastructure is going to be able us to develop faster. We'll have higher quality and reliability in our meetings and enterprise voice experiences. And those experiences are going to be part of Microsoft Teams. And so the meeting experiences and the enterprise voice and our phone systems uh, 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 capabilities are now going to be a Microsoft team. So that was like the biggest announcement that we launched here today. And Dan, can tell us a little bit about why that's so significant. Yeah, um, it was kind of funny you said in case somebody missed it. We, we had we, we did a little bit of um, accidental pre-announcement a little bit and so it wasn't <laughs> the warm -up it wasn't, announcement. yeah it wasn't maybe the biggest news for everybody there are actually still people who who were surprised and interested and really wanted to know yeah um you know i think the the biggest thing uh, there's maybe three things i would say about uh, about what we what we're talking about first is we're still very committed to skype for business that has not changed we're actually releasing an update to the skype for business on-prem server uh, stated, slated for Q4 next year. Dates may change, of course. Yeah. Uh, but that's a, a big investment that we're working on. Second, um, you know, as part of announcing that we're enabling these Skype for Business services and bringing them into Teams, Teams is ready and will be even more ready over time mm -hmm. for companies to adopt, whether individuals, groups of people, or the entire organization to move into Teams for their UC needs or for their IC needs, I guess. And then the third thing is um, we actually have been investing a lot both in terms of content and our fast track program as well as what we're doing in the app to help our users and our admins through this journey from Skype to Teams. Yeah. And from a community perspective, Tom, do, how do you guys, how have you been hearing customers and your uh, your fellow MVPs react to this? Yeah, it's, it's been interesting. Obviously, it's a, it's a, a big evolution. So um, there was a lot of kind of nervousness about what it might mean. But actually, the way the messaging has come across has been, you know, this is an evolution and you're going at your own pace and admins will control this and you can run side by side with Teams and Skype. So um, I've been working the booth quite a lot and most of the questions are just about how can I begin to take advantage of Teams. There doesn't seem to be a, a lot of worry about that because the messaging has landed that this is very much in the customer's control. Um, the nice thing is the ability to do things side by side, meaning you can start playing with Teams now yeah. and still be running Skype side by side and have a feel for where it suits your business. Yeah. 
Um, we talked a lot about uh, Skype for Business and Teams integration yesterday in the podcast, so we'll have that available on demand if you guys missed it. But we talked a lot about the commitment to the server and um, some considerations to thinking about when you're moving to both. So today I want to really focus and really hone in into what we mean by intelligent communications and how that experience surfaces in Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Uh, so if, if all you are familiar with, we have a new sort of product offering across Microsoft called Microsoft 365, and it's built for teamwork. And we think Microsoft Teams is sort of the hub for teamwork. Yeah, no, it's not just pillar. a saying, yeah. it's, a, it's a way of life. It's um, a way of life. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. We uh, When we started out with Teams, we were really focused on this group collaboration space, really the, the chat-centered, talking about stuff in a chat, getting your team together, moving from something like email that's a, a little more disjoint and formal into something faster and more fluid around chat. And then it, it became pretty obvious that teams are doing a lot more than just chatting with each other. Of course, they're sharing files, so we have file sharing in there. But also, they may want to call somebody or have a meeting or have a meeting that people can dial into or do a broadcast. And so it, it, it over time, it just made a lot more sense for us to look at the scenarios that were being fulfilled within the Skype for Business area and the scenarios in the Teams area and bring those together. There's a bunch of things we get by doing that and actually bringing together everything in Microsoft 365 that adds a ton of this kind of intelligence into the uh, into the Teams mm -hmm. capability. Um, some of it is, is, is fairly natural and obvious, but just having it there in the same hub, in the same yeah. screen experience is intelligenceifying on its own, just yeah. in terms of reducing the amount of switching costs. One of the things we just did was we enabled the ability, working with our, our partners in Office, to edit documents inside of Teams. So we're in a chat, I share a file with you, maybe it's the agenda for an upcoming meeting, uh, it's in an Excel, yeah. right? And in the old days, I might have sent it as an attachment. If I were forward looking, I may have put it in a OneDrive and sent you a link. In Teams now, you just share it in the chat, and it's automatically put in SharePoint uh, in a team or OneDrive in a private chat. And now, when you open it up in Teams, you can click Edit, and right there in Teams, you can edit it. So that's a yeah. really nice optimization and, and reduction in, in, in switching costs. There's a lot more, though, that, uh, that, that we have and that we're working on that's, I think, going to really optimize people's experiences and improve their efficiency and help them reach more informed conclusions faster. One, one great example that I know we've been thinking about for a while is how you have a call or a meeting, and yeah, you, you used to usually think about the call or the meeting right in the moment of that call or meeting. So it's, you know, okay, dial in, get everything working, share the slides. It actually, that conversation that you're having with those people, mm -hmm. that goes on, it started before the meeting started. It, yeah. it goes on long after the meeting. One of the biggest problems, actually, is that a lot of what happens in that meeting doesn't go with you out of the meeting yeah. room or out of the yeah. online room. It gets room. lost. Yeah. It gets so, lost in the shuffle. So this whole meeting lifecycle investment that we're doing, I think, is going to be very powerful there. Giving you the right context about the people and even the chat history you had going in so you know where you left off last time, yeah. your to-dos and your notes and stuff. And people that missed the meeting, like they can catch up on well, the I was say, Yeah, so then after the meeting, there's the recording. Naturally, cloud-based recording means we transcribe it. And then we can do translation on that as well. And so if you missed it on accident or perhaps on purpose because, yeah. you know, you got too many meetings or you just wanted to catch five minutes of it, we just go back and catch that specific part of it. And it's a permanent part of the record for that conversation. So all the chats that happen later, files you share later, whatever, it's just that continuous engagement you're having with that group of people over time. So it's a really nice intelligence capability that we're adding. Yeah. Uh, what I like about it is what I call reducing the context switching that I have yeah. to do. So, you know, like last week I was on vacation and I had to, um, instead of what I would traditionally do, I would go to Outlook and try to respond to all the emails yeah. that I've missed. Instead, I just started my workday in Teams and I know that Ignite was a top priority. So I went to the Ignite channel. I saw the actions that I missed and, and then things that I needed to uh, immediately respond to. And it was just so much easier for yeah, me to get stuff done. Triage is, I don't know if you've seen this in modality, triage of my morning inbox or my morning chat box activity feed is a very different ritual now. Um, and and I, have, I, I used to create a lot of rules in Outlook, but it was kind of a pain. Yeah. I now have, like, there's certain channels I follow. Anytime somebody posts in one of the channels related to my team, I get a message, no matter what topic it is. And then there are other times people are just at mentioning me, and that's when I know about it. And I favorited some channels that I check periodically. Third-party services may push messages in that I can check. It just it totally it, it kind of rotated or upended the way that yeah. I triage made it more fe the efficient. At, the at mentioning is really killer for me at Modality. So I work across quite a few different projects. So I'm in a, a lot of teams, and there are things that I wouldn't want to be on an email thread for. So previously, 
I would catch up with the team on the project once a week and I would get all the information, but there would be emails going in the week where I wouldn't want to have those in my inbox, but at that time in the week, I might want to reference back. Now that's so much yeah. easier because I can jump into their channel, catch up on everything at my own pace without being flooded with the email. And if they want me more urgently to respond or it's a question or query, they at mention me, I know to jump in straight away. So it lets me span a lot more projects and be involved in a lot more conversations without having the insanity of every single email in that project. Yeah, one of the things that I like is that email, you can e actually email a channel. So yeah, not yeah. everyone is on the Teams bandwagon yet. Uh, we're, we're or some, maybe you get a report sent externally or something. Exactly, yeah. and then you can just forward that email to the group, because every group has its own email address, and so now yeah. everyone in the uh, in the team can have that, you know, have that right context and have that information. Yeah, yeah it's really cool. You know, we were talking about intelligence. Another thing that I actually uh, think is kind of cool is all the signals, all the things you do in the Microsoft Cloud and Office 365 that go into this intelligence store we call the graph. So when you share a file with somebody, we know that, hey, that's a person you did a, a share action with. When you're in a lot of meetings with people or you have a lot of chats or previously emails with people, we know that there's a relationship there. We then use that to help you be more effective in Teams. Yeah. We rec if you First time you come into Teams, you may notice, we recommend people to chat with. Those aren't random. It's yeah. based on what the graph is telling us about who are the people you're closest to, who are you most frequently in contact with, who's on a team that you're on. We even recommend teams for you to join using the same intelligence service that tells yeah. us, hey, there's a lot of people you're associated with or close to in the graph space that are on this team and this team and this team. So maybe you should go and join those teams. Yeah. And I, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that is a little subtle, but I think it actually can be very empowering because we everything's in the cloud. We're able to track and, and, and build re and reason from that information. Yeah, the ability to use all the, we co you know, we collect lots of information not to track. Or yeah, it, to sounds, it brother, sounds a little big brother. Yeah, no, it's all within the domain of each customer's uh, we data We use space. big yeah. data and artificial yeah. intelligence to just be smarter about c communicating. And that's kind of what I like about Teams versus other products is because it's so intuitive. It's so natural. And so things like Building that intelligence makes it a lot more adoptive, mm -hmm. or excuse me, be able to more quickly uh, adapt the technology. And when you know, when you go into other tools, you kind of have to spend days on end figuring out all the bells and whistles. Yeah, yeah. And that's the benefit of having uh, everything in the Microsoft 365 umbrella, isn't it? Because you can track on graph what you're doing across different products and surface that all in Teams. So if yeah. you're using discrete products for each of those scenarios for my communications for my office for, for my editing you don't get the signal throughout the entire stack but with yeah. teams you get it throughout whatever you're working on yeah and we could even imagine so that's what teams does today and that's pretty transformative um, but if you think about the assets across Microsoft 365 tell us a little bit of something of what it could look like in the future sure when well, the future is coming pretty soon <laughs> uh, at least for some of these things one of my uh, favorite uh, scenarios around teams is using SharePoint um, I like to think of teams as being the perfect kind of front-end app for SharePoint and OneDrive um, it took forever for at least me and some of the people I work with to wean ourselves off of classic attachments, but uh, you know, just attaching a file to an email. But with Teams, everything you share is automatically in the cloud on the SharePoint site, and so it's in a, available for everybody, governed by the same security restrictions as, as everything else in the team. So that's that's call that step one for SharePoint, the the file storage capability in Microsoft Teams. Steps two through N, uh, including several that are announced today, go way beyond that, or announced this week, I guess, go way beyond that. One of them is uh, we know that there's a lot of uh, intellectual capital invested in SharePoint sites, portal sites, community sites, mm -hmm. news sites. And with the new modern UI capabilities that SharePoint has, those actually look really nice. And I remember customizing web parts back in the day. It was kind of fun, but they all kind of looked the same. And they looked like you know somebody had somebody like me had done them. <laughs> um, and so it's actually really nice to see that even just the way the pages compose themselves, it's beautiful. Well, now the SharePoint team has added SharePoint pages into Teams. It's rolling out. It's not, not fully out yet, but it's coming soon. And now you can take one of those beautiful portal pages or news pages and pin it as a tab inside your channel. So you've got your communications. You've, of course, you've got your files, which you already had from SharePoint. And now you have your portal page or community page yeah. or your news page right there. Um, they did a, a couple other really cool things. So um, I've occasionally on and off been a power user of SharePoint. And so I will do things like create a workflow or check in, check out, or do version control. And uh, if, if you're used to using the Teams file experience, you know those aren't available. You have to pop over to SharePoint for that. 
Well, we're working with them on a common file management control that will sit there in the files tab in Teams that will actually give much more capability and much more flexibility in terms of what users, even power users, want to see without having to pop out. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, last thing, if I can, on SharePoint, um, they, uh, they're doing this really cool uh, file previewer for not just you know, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, but for things like 3D objects. Mm. And so now when I paste one of those 3D objects into a, uh, or, sorry, upload one of the 3D objects into a channel, I share that file. The little preview that shows when I click on it and then I open it, I actually am seeing, like uh, the one I was doing this morning, it's the Space Needle from Seattle and I can spin it and fly around it and everything. Yeah. And I, again, it's in context. I can have a chat right next to that in Teams, of course, because the chats are tied to any of those objects. And so now I've, I don't have to switch context. I don't have to pop out. It's really powerful to have that. And that's all coming soon. Yeah. And we have the bot capabilities already built in today. And I know you at Modality use the bot capabilities for some network assessments. Yeah, How that's do you right. Do yeah. That? We, use, we use them really heavily for that. So a good use case to explain Teams for, that I use is our network assessment. So we do network assessments for Skype and for Teams, so testing your network with, with Skype bots that make calls. And what we have is we run each assessment in a team. So we use the, the team for communication. So we use the chat, obviously. But then we do all the bot configuration and setup is in a OneNote tab in Teams. So all that is in one place. Any files we use go into the file store on SharePoint, but in the team. But we also use Power BI to do all the reporting. So we have a Power BI tab. And that shows us the real-time status of the network assessment and the real results of the network assessment. But then we use the bot framework, and the bot framework can tell us when individual test nodes go offline. So that previously was a crazy workflow. We were, we're a global company, so it was a global team, um, and different people looked after the nodes, different people looked after the reporting. And now that entire group of people surfaces everything in one place. And it, it's like... It revolutionized sounds cheesy, but like compared to the amount of email I was involved in, because I'm involved in a lot of those projects, I can just dip into the team, go to the Power BI tab, see the status. I know the config files are going to be in the file tab. I know that the background is going to be in the OneNote. And talking about email, whenever we email the customers, we'll BCC the team channel in. So if anybody's oh, communicating with the customer, we know that the comms are there, and we can have an internal thread about that conversation all in Teams as well. So it's really brought it together and meant we can be much more scalable and adaptable with network assessments because everybody knows where everything is. Yeah, everything's coming. And you can think about bots even taking it to the next level. So if you think about meetings, which is the area that I own, integrating a bot or an intelligent bot into the meeting experience is, is something that we're thinking about and being able to listen in. And so you can tell the bot, hey, take this action item. Yeah, I want a minutes bot. That would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> These are the key things that we discussed. Take an action item, assign that that task to someone and then that bot automatically go out and create something and store the notes into yeah. OneNote and so it'll be just be all there so that's kind of the I those are the things that I get yeah, I want a Dan bot that I can send <laughs> to the meetings and just say no or yes depending like I have certain things I just like to say and then I'll just <laughs> go off and do real work have the so I go to a lot of meetings yeah. well we do have voice uh, speech translation so yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay cool so we those are some of the intelligent capabilities. I'd love to talk about some of the recent announcements that we made this mm -hmm. week. Oh, and actually, last week, we made one big announcement on guest access. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what guest access is for those who don't know yeah, and yeah, um, how it can be beneficial? Sure thing. So one of the, the things that, that people are collaborating in a team have been asking us for a while, very naturally, is, hey, my uh, team isn't fully bound by my company. Mm -hmm. I have a marketing consultant or a contractor, somebody I need to bring into the team. I want them to be part of the team conversation experience, have access to the files, tabs, whatever, without having to like make them part of my company officially. It's not just about buying the license. It's, it's about provisioning them in IT, and then they have access to everything, and you really just want them on that team. So we built this feature called Guest Access, which is based on a platform technology called Azure AD B2B Collab. And what Guest Access does is you specify the email address of somebody you want to invite as a guest. They get added to the team. Actually, they get added to the Azure AD directory with their authentication going back to their home tenant, uh, to where the company they're from. So it's the same password. When they change it in the home, it's, it's changed. You know, it's essentially the same authentication. Um, and then they get, they get added to the tenant as a guest user, and then we add them to the team. So they actually show up in the list of people on the team. 
they have a reduced set of privileges, uh, and, and the team owners can control some of that, and the IT admins, the tenant admins can specify some of that as well. And then they can chat in the team, uh, join meetings and calls, uh, you know, look at files, edit files, mm -hmm. all the things that, that everybody else could do. The, uh, right now it's limited to guests who are coming from Azure AD. There's 900 some million people there. Um, we are very... Is that Almost a billion. It is. I think so. Okay. I think it's close. Just yeah. checking. Yeah. No, it's up there. <laughs> um, no, I, I. It's the number we have. I don't. I haven't talked to a sizable fraction of them, so I'm not sure. Um, the uh, but the other thing we're doing relatively soon is expanding that to MSA. So anybody with an email address, whether they have an MSA or they sign up as part of coming in, will be able to be a guest on a team. And then because, and this is one of the benefits of being part of a, a platform like M365. Because we're based on Azure AD B2B Collab, as they add new authentication providers, mm -hmm. you know, certain competing companies in the cloud, perhaps, yeah. of ours, as they add new authentication providers, we will be able to, uh, I think, either with no or very little work, be able to add those identities uh, as guests in our team as well. So that's, so that's opening up for a, a contractor you bring in from a marketing company who, for whatever reason, doesn't have Azure AD, doesn't have 365. Yeah. They can now join the team when you have that new Absolutely. Microsoft access. Yeah. Now, we, we do get some questions about, hey, how is this different or the same like Federation or some other kind of external access features? This scenario that we shipped is really just the first part of a journey we have around enabling people outside of your company to participate in Teams. It's specifically about a guest joining a team and having privileges within that team. There's a separate family of scenarios that we call Federation, which is, you know, maybe Tom's in one company, I'm in another. We just want to chat back and forth. We're not, we're not really looking to... Uh, uh, be on the same team together. I don't want to give them access to any of the resources in my company, but I do want to chat, kind of like email, but better, yeah. but smileys and gifts. <laughs> um, so we call that federation, uh, and that is definitely, especially because we're bringing the uh, Skype for Business capabilities into Teams. Right. It's one of the key ones we need to deliver so our customers feel comfortable moving. Customers who use that capability feel comfortable moving to Teams. So we will cover that, and we also want to bring that and guest access a little closer together in terms of the experience so that people can seamlessly switch between both and not get too confused about exactly how we built it. Yeah. There's another part of that, which is just joining a meeting as a guest. We already have that now with the dial-in conferencing yeah. that we shipped for, for meetings, so you can dial in. And soon we'll have, have it so that just like in Skype for Business, anybody with the URL can join the meeting. Yeah, yeah. so um, uh, what Dan is mentioning is that we just released audio conferencing for, for Microsoft teams it's in preview today but it's been uh, it's actually been a service that we've had for nearly two years this December we'll be celebrating the two-year anniversary of audio conferencing and Skype for business and so even if uh, they're not a guest in the team and they get invited to a meeting they'll be able to have dialing coordinates for that and so that's yeah. pretty uh, transformative in terms of hey someone can pick up the phone and be a part of a meeting experience and um, whatever is said over the uh, and during the meeting could be recorded during cloud recording. We'll have a record of that. And, you know, when we talk about translation and transcription, everything could be time coded. So it's really cool that, yeah. you know, you can see all aspects of uh, all participants joining from all different types of modalities still being brought into yeah. one experience. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the two-year anniversary because I think that it, it's a bit of a nuanced point. The Cloud conferencing service, audio conferencing, even the cloud voice service, just the phone system that you can get now in now in Skype for Business, also in Teams and Preview. That's existing proven telephony stack from Microsoft. Your phone number doesn't change, uh, for better or worse. Your phone number, you can't avoid people calling you just because you moved to Teams. Your voicemails go with you too, uh, for better or worse, yeah. uh, but yeah. they're there for you, and obviously for better. Uh, yeah. But it, the point is, it's the same service. It's been maturing, growing. We've been investing in it a lot, and now we're essentially lighting that up under the hub. And, that, and that's good to know for people who are going on the journey now, because if you've got Skype Business Online or Cloud PBX now, it's good to know that what you're doing there, that's, that investment is going to carry forward. So if you're giving people uh, Cloud PBX or Microsoft Phone System, the rebrand, phone numbers now, that will carry forward seamlessly into Teams. You're not going to have to change all that up again. Yeah, I want to mention one thing. Um, we did make some service name changes to a couple of services, and so um, you're not going to quiz us, are you? <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> uh, so for those of you familiar with Cloud PBX, we renamed Cloud PBX to Phone System. We also renamed PSTN Conferencing to Audio Conferencing, uh, and then. Uh, 
PSTN communication uh, or consumption was named renamed to communication credits. And then the final change that we made is PSTN calling, which is the calling plan capabilities. We renamed that to uh, calling plans. So they're much more simplified names. They're easier to understand. You know, if you're new to this modern workforce, you don't have to look up the definition of PBX or PSTN. It's really <laughs> simple. 20th century terms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, we're going to get fined by the acronym police, though. We better <laughs> gen up some new acronyms pretty quickly. Um, one thing I want to uh, talk about is this new infrastructure and in core. Like, what what benefit is that going to give us as we move forward? Yeah, so uh, Teams is born in the cloud. Actually, I think I stole that slogan from another company, so I apologize. It's not our trademark. But Teams was definitely born and created in the cloud, and the stack that we're using uh, certainly, the, what we're bringing from Skype for Business for telephony is, is obviously cloud-based, um, but also the uh, the VoIP, the the audio and video and screen sharing, just you know, in a meeting from your webcam and your microphone. That's all a new cloud-based service that we've been working on for uh, for a couple of years now, but really standing up for Teams. Same with the chat service that we have. That's also purely cloud-based. Um, what that gives us is what well, gives us a number of things. One, it's very forward-looking. So we don't have a lot of the, for better or worse, the baggage associated with interop with some of the, the older on-prem stacks. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot easier to iterate on. Um, we have been iterating on Teams more than once a week in many cases in the client and on the service on a, at a pretty regular pace as well. Um, and then it, because we're building this on Azure and on Office 365, and we actually are, um, that means that we it's very easy to benefit from shared services out there. So a lot of the, you, you mentioned broadcast, we talked about recording. A lot of this is actually based on the Azure media technologies that are the same as Microsoft Stream. And if we were building on a you know, slightly different stack, or maybe we were a, not a Microsoft product, um, that would be a lot harder. There'd be yeah. a lot of building from scratch there. So obviously higher quality, just because it's newer, better, a lot more telemetry, we're able to test it better. We're also getting feedback that it's higher quality, but also more innovative because we get access to everything in the stack much more easily. And I know you probably use machine learning, so you're collecting all that data, and you can use machine learning to be more adaptive when things go wrong. Yep. So you can roll back changes very quickly and deploy fixes <laughs> yes, very yes. quickly. Yes, uh, yes. Often our users are, are faster than the, the machine to tell us. But no, there, are, there are more subtle things around, like if the call lag time increases dramatically, or if we see a, an odd spike in call failures that's localized to a specific geography, those are the kind of things, those are, those are the kinds of things that a learning and monitoring from running a service is going to tell us. And of course, we manage our service using Microsoft Teams, as right. you would expect. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just like you guys do, yeah. right? Yeah. They, they did a really good video, uh, I just saw it this morning, on developing on Teams or developing using Microsoft Teams. It's a nice little video blog. Yeah, Tom Morgan, did. so you can Google that, it's on YouTube. Yeah, with, like, um, our, our devs Bing. were very early, yeah, Bingle. Um, <laughs> our, our devs were very early on Teams, and they they love that, so they're slightly towards developing everything they can on Teams at the moment. It's quite funny to see how quickly they do their stand-ups there, they do all their product notes there, and they have uh, Visual Studio backlog tied into there, so it's really cool. Yeah, that's a good transition. I love as a UC consultant, and you've had many, many years experience in this, yeah. and now you're starting to consult customers on what are some of the use cases and scenarios that they use. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's an interesting one. It's a, a lot of our projects start off talking around phone and phone system, uh, particularly with Skype. And even with Skype, when it was UC, realistically, a lot of it was like, we're going to replace conferencing, we're going to replace phone. With, with Teams, the conversation is very different. It's a much more business-led conversation quite often. Um, so typically, we've seen uh, IT and developers get a handle on it very quickly. Like It seems to just universally chat-based work seems to suit IT yeah. and devs very much. Um, so that's an easy one. Uh, but even when we're talking to businesses, it's about improving business process. So using the tabs, using the SharePoint integration, using the chat to make sure that they're actually getting some value and not just replacing uh, a chat product with a chat product, but actually taking advantage of the new concepts. And, and, and in some ways, that, that unleashes a lot of power. But in other ways, that requires a better conversation with the business because you're not just throwing a chat line out there anymore. You're actually saying, look, this is a, a new, faster, more agile way of working. We're bringing you business value. So a lot of my consulting, uh, and it's, it's happened over the last kind of few years, but even more so with Teams, is as much about business change and user adoption as it is about technology. Uh, and with 365, 
you know, to some extent, the technology is starting to look after itself. So actually, I think for anybody who's consulting out there or working with customers, my recommendation was start looking at how businesses leverage this technology more and less about, you know, servers and bits and feeds and speeds. You know, we all love that stuff with, you know, a lot of techies in the audience, I'm sure. But the business value stuff, when you unlock that for businesses, that's amazing. Yeah, I think that's part of one of the benefits of coming to Office 365 is that you don't have to do that anymore. Like as Dan mentioned, it's a yeah. managed service for us. And the intelligence is not just it surfaced in the application. The intelligence is built all the way down to the infrastructure, mm -hmm. the monitoring, the reactions, the responses in terms of how we get things done. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Well, now I want to, before we wrap up, I, I know, Tom, you have one more session here. Do you want to talk a little bit about your next session? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I'll be doing a session on uh, Theater 5 on the expo floor. I'm doing a Cloud PBX, now a Microsoft phone system in the real world. So it's a session where we're going to try and uh, demarketing all the terms and just lay out what the options are. Um, where you go from depending on where you're starting. So if you've got any questions around how Cloud PBX and, and PSD and calling and conferencing all hang together, that's what we're aiming to do in that session. Cool. And if you're interested and you want to get started with uh, Microsoft Teams, we have a couple of guidance that's available with you. Uh, there is Success with Teams. That's going to be uh, available at successwithteams.com. And I, Dan, I know your team owns that website and all the resources. Tell us a little bit how this is going to help them get sure, started. It's a partner team of mine. It's not directly my team. I so, just so, wanna, so this is the nice thing about being in the, teams, reorg on the, air. the team's product team, I think, because you get to take advantage of everybody's investments, like the SharePoint investments. Yeah. That you're like, yeah. And we're very <laughs> grateful and thankful. It doesn't always show, but we can thank them on air now for all their, all their hard work supporting us, and, and, and we do try and support them. The um, yeah, there, There's a, a, a number of things that we've covered in our documentation. Uh, Tom made a really good point there about change management and culture change. Yes, this is a technology change. It is technically a tool change, or a, you know, whether you're coming from Skype for Business or mm, Slack or something. It's definitely <laughs> a new app that you're moving to, but it is it is not the way you were experiencing communication and Outlook or in Skype for Business. One of my uh, favorite customer meetings, and we, we had a preview program going back um, actually over a year now. We had quite a few customers in our early preview, and one of those customers I met with, it was uh, somebody from IT and somebody from HR. And the human resources person was there to talk about change management, changing the way they work. Not, not just the process of change management, but the, the psychological shift in mm -hmm. open communication. Developers have been there for a while. Scrum, open floor plans perhaps for yeah. other reasons, but the rest, you know, information workers haven't always had that opportunity. I think that's a, a huge thing. So in, in success of teams and in some of the other resources, we have a lot of information about driving that adoption, driving that, that cultural change. We're actually working on a... Um, kind of a content pack that will ship in Teams. It also is a SharePoint uh, site in a box. They'll contain information for customers to use on site to guide their employees through that change as well. Just learn kind of this new way of work, this new way of, of, of interacting with Teams. Cool. All right, well, uh, this concludes our time today. I want to thank you all for joining us, and thank you, Dan, for participating in the show. And Tom, welcome back. Thank you. And I hope you both come back so that okay. we can see. Definitely. If you guys want to tune into our show, we are, by, as I mentioned earlier, we are biweekly at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The show is called Teams on Air, and you can reach us at aka.ms Teams on Air. And our next episode will be via Skype meeting broadcast. And that's our technology where you're able to do one one to many broadcasts live. It has real-time playback, so if you're late, you can always rewind the show and, and catch up on, on your time. And uh, so we use that technology to go live every week. So that's just another one of our intelligent communication services, and we use that to bring you news and features and roadmap news about Teams and Skype for Business. So hopefully I'll see you guys October 13th, and thank you. Thank you. Thanks,